what their preferences are. West across the country, a Kansas family is enjoying meat for supper obtained from their local butcher, who knows the kind of meat they prefer. Down in Houston, Texas, the local meat dealers know the meat buying customs of people down there. All over the country, customs influence the kinds of meat people like for breakfast, dinner, and supper. All these preferences are satisfied through the extensive and efficient marketing methods of the modern meat packer. His experience has helped to develop a marketing system that satisfies the many wants of consumers. But it wasn't always this way. Let's go back to a farm of 60 years ago and see how all this started. The farmer of those days usually prepared the carcass himself. Even in those early days, he may not have done this, but not having the modern transportation methods that are available today, he took it to the nearest town by whatever means he had. There he sold it to the local butcher. Naturally, the cuts of meat the people liked best in that town were sold first and brought the most money. To move the balance while fresh, the remainder sold at a reduction in price. This resulted in a lower average price to the farmer. In those days, the price the farmer received for his livestock was governed only by what the local meat dealer could get for the cuts of meat. The retailer was not at fault. It was a case of not having a satisfactory meat marketing system. Let's look at an example to explain just what that means. Here are two towns. We will call them Town A and Town B. Actually, the towns are far apart. Town A, where lived the farmer and butcher we just met, sold these cuts readily. Town B could have used the remainder and perhaps would have paid a better price than was obtained for it in Town A. Neither the farmer nor the retailer could bring about a matching of supply and demand for the various cuts. Out of necessity, there developed the meat packer, who could perform the job of giving both towns the cuts of meat each of them wanted. The result? A better average price for the entire carcass and more money to the producer for his livestock. As the years went by, the job of the meat packer became more complex. The widening distance between the main livestock producing areas and the main meat consuming areas developed to the point where it is now more than a thousand miles on the average between the producers of livestock and the consumers of meat. It is necessary for the meat packer to know the preferences of consumers all over the country. For example, what Mrs. Boston wants in the way of lamb what Mrs. New York demands in beef, and what the various Mrs. Atlantas, Galvestons, and San Francisco's prefer in kinds, types, and grades of the meat they serve. It is the meat packer's job to cater to these preferences or customs, to give the consumer what she wants when she wants it. Studies of the meat buying preferences of the nation reveal that customs have an important influence on the marketing and consumption of meats. One of the best examples of customs in the meat business is the preference in different parts of the country for meats from different weights of animals. The cuts of beef preferred by Boston people come from animals weighing about 1,300 pounds. New York's preference is from cattle of 1,100 to 1,200 pounds of weight. Washington, D.C. people like beef from cattle weighing 1,000 to 1,100 pounds. As we go west, the demand is for beef from lighter weight cattle. This is true as we move progressively through Pittsburgh, Buffalo, and farther west. In Chicago, the livestock capital of the world, the demand for beef is from lighter weight cattle and to the east of it. 
St. Louis's preference for beef is from cattle ranging from 600 to 700 pounds. The Midwestern area from the Dakotas to Texas and also to the south, with the exception of Florida, likes its meat from 600 to 800 pound cattle. Farther west, the preference for beef is from cattle a little heavier than in the Middle Western region. To summarize the influence of the weight differences, compare the little steer weighing 600 to 700 pounds, preferred in St. Louis, with the big steer weighing about 1,300 pounds, which furnishes the beef that is preferred in Boston. The livestock buyer for the meat packer, when buying live cattle, looks at them from the viewpoint of the weight and quality of the ribs, loins, rounds, and other cuts they will produce. This is because meat dealers and their customers in various sections of the country have different preferences and their preferences must be satisfied. We have seen how customs influence the demand for beef from cattle of different weights. Now let's have a look at some other factors which affect meat buying customs, such as taste, buying power, weather and seasons, religious beliefs and so forth. Taste is a thing that is hard to define. Still, it has a big influence on what people choose as long as they have the money to satisfy their preferences. Boston people want their beef, lamb, and pork to come from the heavier animals, which naturally carry more fat. In the South, many of the famous meat dishes are composed of lean meats, which are combined with highly seasoned gravies and sauces. In the Southwest, hot tamales, chili con carne, and barbecue sauces are very popular. Another influence on meat buying customs is buying power. In other words, the money that people have to spend for meat. If John Smith wants steak for supper, and steak costs more than Mrs. Smith can pay, Mr. Smith gets nourishing pot roast. Weather and seasons also affect the kind of meat people will buy. When the weather gets hot, the women who do most of the buying of foods are not as willing buyers of roasts as they are of steaks and chops, unless the prices on roasts are low enough to be attractive. On the other hand, when it's cooler, appetites are bigger, and housewives do not object to spending time around the kitchen stove. Roasts, boiling meats, and stews become more popular than during hot weather. Retail dealers in the large consuming centers report that their trade falls off whenever rain, sleet, or snow make it difficult for housewives to get out. Religious beliefs affect meat consumption on a national scale. On Fridays, certain days during Lent, and on other days throughout the year, large portions of our population do not eat meat. Another example of the effect of religious beliefs is that because of dietary customs, Orthodox Jewish people do not eat pork. To satisfy these variable factors of preference, Weights and cuts, tastes, buying power, weather and seasons, and religious beliefs was one of the reasons the national marketing system of the meat packer came into existence. Because the meat packer knows the meat buying customs of consumers all over the United States, and because he has the modern marketing system to meet those customs, livestock producers receive a higher level of prices for their livestock. <laughs>